Hey, what is up guys, and welcome back to another video, and in this video, we're going to be continuing on with our Java programming tutorial series, and in this series, we're finally going to get into the um, programming concepts that, that you guys want to know about, um, and to start off with, uh, to start off those concepts, we're going to start with variables. Now, what are variables? Variables are essentially a placeholder for a value. So if you think back to math class, you'll usually see something like X, Y, or Z, or T, or a, some kind of letter as a placeholder for something uh, in, a, in an equation or, or, or something of that nature. That is essentially a variable. But in programming, a variable can contain many different kinds of values, uh, rather than just numbers. So in Java, a, vari a variable can hold integer values, it can hold floating point values, and it can hold string values as well as true-false values. Um, integers, obviously, are whole numbers, so you can think of that like 5, 10, uh, 20, whatever. Uh, floating point values are values that contain a decimal point, so you can think of something like 3.14 or 5.25 or something of that nature. A string is basically text, so you can think of Hello World from the example in the previous tutorial where we printed out Hello World to the console. We passed uh, the print ln function or method with a, we passed it a string in between quotation marks. That is a string. Um, and then we've also got Booleans. Booleans c can only be one of two values. They can be true or they can be false. The Booleans are really useful for making decisions within your uh, within your code. Um, so if you need to test someone for their age to see if they are old enough to vote or old enough to uh, drink an alcoholic beverage or old enough to say, um, you know, buy some kind of product somewhere. You know, something of that, so, something like that, those are situations where Booleans are really, really useful. Um, Booleans are also useful for when you're validating user input on forms or in the console to make sure that you get the right input so your program knows how to handle certain inputs and that kind of jazz. So, without further ado, let's get into the actual programming. Now... We're going to look at how you make an integer first, and we're going to move down the list. So, an integer is declared by my first using the int keyword. So you type int. So int, and then this is where we give it a name. So I'm going to say sum int. And then we go ahead and do an equal sign. And then this is where we give it a value. So I'm going to say 20. So 20 is our integer. Now what if we want to show this on the screen? Well, we can do that by going system.out.print ln and then in between these clo opening and closing parentheses we put in our variable name so sum int the nice thing about this print ln function is it can take in any kind of argument you give it it can take in objects it can take in ints it can take in booleans it can take in strings it can take in basically anything you really want it to take in so, with that being said, let's go ahead then and save this, and go ahead and hit the run button now, 
And if we look down in our console, we see it printed out 20, just like we expected it to. And that's really, that's really useful to know how to print out uh, integers and stuff like that. Um, it's also useful to know how you actually create an integer. So, again, to summarize, we go, we go and type the word int, which is a keyword in Java. It stands for integer. We give it a name, so some int. This could be x, it could be y, it can be t, it can be whatever you want it to be. Just know that in actual real world applications, name your variable something that actually represents the data you're giving it. Because if you don't, then later on, if you say take a break from your code base and you come back and you look at your code, with all your variables and stuff, you're not going to know what, what they do. You're not going to know what, they, uh, what they're associated with. So make sure you name them uh, make sure you name them well so you'll understand what they do or what they represent later on. Um, but when you're learning, name it whatever you want. N you know name it whatever. Whatever helps you understand the concept of a variable. The next, type of variable we're gonna we're gonna make is a double and a float these are both floating point values they contain uh, decimal points right so there there is a difference between a double and a float and that difference is that a float is less precise it contains less data than some than a double does a double contains significantly more pl decimal places, uh, so you can get much more precise uh, data that way. Um, doubles are good for um, doing uh, very, very important calculations that need to be extremely precise, whereas a floating point, or a float, I should say, whereas a float is typically used for something that isn't as precise. So think of movement in a game or, um, you know, movement in a game, that kind of stuff. Th those sorts of things will use a float because they don't have to be as precise as a double. Now, how do you create variables that contain these values? Well, we can go ahead and say double. Double is the keyword for this, uh, for to create a double. And then we'll say we'll call it sum double. And then we'll set this equal uh, to say oh One point two three four five six seven eight nine zero, right? So that's a double. To summarize the double, we type the double keyword, then we give it a name, and then we assign it a value, which in this case is one point two three four five six seven eight nine zero. Right, so that's a double. Now, how do you create a float? Well, you type float, that's the keyword. Then we name it, so sum float equals, and then we'll say uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero point. Three, four, for example, and then at the end we have to put an F. The F tells Java, "Hey, this is a float, not a double." So if we go ahead and print these out, we can go system dot out dot print ln. Some double and 
and then system out print ln sum float, right? So we can go ahead and save that. And we go ahead and run this in our console. You can see we get our values. However, you can see when we print out the float, it wasn't able to it wasn't able to print out uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero point three four in a way that in, in a way that um, in the way that we defined it. And that's because and that and that's because Java will automatically uh, put an e and then whatever an x whatever the exponent is supposed to be if the number gets too big. So in this case, it is one point two three four five six seven nine four to the ninth power. Just so so keep that in mind. Uh, sometimes that. Uh, when you print out your values, that can happen depending on how big it is. So, with that, uh, we can also, uh, if we need for some reason to know what the maximum value a double or a float can take, uh, we can also access that. So, system out print ln. In this, we're going to print out the maximum value for a double. Um, so in this case, to do that, you would type double with an uppercase D dot max value. And then you can, you can do the same with the float. So we type float with an uppercase L, or not uppercase L, uppercase F, sorry, dot max value and this also applies to to ints as well so we can do system out print ln and inside of these parentheses we type integer with an uppercase i we so we have to spell out integer put an uppercase i dot max value So when we do that, we can go ahead and run this. You can see we get our two initial values. And then we get the maximum values for our uh, data types. So an integer can go up to a pretty significant amount. It can go up to two trillion one hundred and forty seven billion four hundred and well no. I'm reading that number wrong. It can go up to two billion one hundred and forty three million four hundred and eighty three thousand six hundred and forty seven. Right. So that's that's one th so that's one uh, maximum value. But now if we go down to double and our float, the first is our double. You can see the much bigger number on the double, 1.797693134862315 to the 308th power. Whereas the float only goes to 3.4028235 and eight, two, three, five, to the 38th power, a significantly smaller number. So that kind of covers the numeric data types.
So let's go ahead and remove this code that we wrote here. The next thing we're going to cover is string related data types. And those, da and those data types are a string and a character or char, as you'll see it referred to uh, in the code. Now, what's the difference between a string and a char? Well, a string is a collection of multiple characters, whereas a char is just a single character. Now, these aren't defined the, the same way either, as we'll see here in a moment. Um, sometimes uh, you'll want to use a string when you're dealing with user input, like in a, in a, a command line interface program, so you might want to have you might want to have the user actually type out yes or no. A string is going to be used is going to be used typically for that. But if you just want them to type y or n, for example, usually a character will do just fine because you're only wanting them to to type a single character, nothing more. So char ha char has its uses as well as string. Um, it's really up to the programmer to say, hey, uh, you know, what kind of data type do I want to use here for this? So let's go ahead and define a, we're going to define a string. So let's say we have a, we have string. Uh, that's our that's our keyword for string for creating a string variable. We're gonna name it. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna call this a name, and we're gonna set this equal uh, to oh. Let's say we're let's say we'll set this to Ben. Right. So we have our ver so we have a string call uh, with the value of Ben. And we're calling it name. And now we want this to be printed to the console, so we'll say system out print ln And inside of here, we'll put name. Right. So when, now with that, we can run this. And we get Ben in the console. Pretty neat. Now, what about a character? Well, a character uses the char keyword. We're going to we're going to name this some char. We're set it equal to something. Now, this is where uh, now this is one of the differences between a string and a char when you're defining it. A string you have to use double quotes. However, when you want to declare a character, you have to use single quotes. So with that, this can be whatever. This can be a character code. Uh, it can be a Unicode character. Um, it can, you know, it can it can be anything, uh, as long as it's only one character. So let's just go ahead, and we're gonna. Just make this an A for simplicity, a lowercase a. Well, once we have that, we can also print this to the console. So system.out.println sum char, right? So let's go ahead and run that, make sure we save it. And now you can see we get Ben and we get an, uh, we get an A 
specifically a lowercase a, printed to the console. Now, now of course, you know, that's not the only way that you can, uh, that's not the only thing you can, you can use a character for, uh, you know, by putting an actual a character like an A or a Z or a B or whatever in there. You can also do Unicode characters. So I'm going to quickly find uh, on my phone here. I'm gonna I'm gonna find the Unicode uh, character. You know the Unicode code for a for a degree uh, for the degree symbol. And Okay, looks like Google brought it up here. So what we want to put in there is in here we're going so inside of our char here, inside of, inside of this, we're going to do a backslash U00B0. This is the degree symbol. You can see we don't get an error because this is a Unicode. Uh, Eclipse recognize it, recognizes it as a uh, character code so we'll go ahead then and we'll run this save it you know do a whatever and then there we go you can see we have the degree symbol on our console now uh, you could theoretically do this with emojis I don't recommend I don't recommend it though um, if you're gonna do anything with emojis and have it display correctly you're better off doing something in uh, in iOS development or web development for that matter uh, to make things to make it show up properly but uh, but yeah that's a string as well as a char some pretty interesting cool stuff there now uh, another little bit on strings a str uh, strings are living a bit of an are, are living a bit of a double life here not only do we treat strings as variables that we can change at a whim like we would any other variable, but they also are an object. So they have their own properties and their own uh, methods to manipulate them and all that kind of stuff. We'll cover that later on, but just know we, can't, we, we use a string as a variable but it, we can also use it as an object to manipulate the value that it contains or points to. So just, just something to keep in the back of your head for now um, until we get to that subject later on. So with that being said, we can now move on to Booleans. So what is a Boolean exactly? Well, a Boolean is a true or false value in uh, older languages like C, for example. Uh, Booleans are represented by a 1 or a 0. Um, that's what they are in binary as well. So 1s and zeros, on or off. Um, so let's give the example of a light bulb. When, you're, when your light bulb is lit up in your bedroom light, for example, or your kitchen light, or something of that nature, that means that, that basically means on, or true, or one. However, if it's off, that means false, or a zero. You often see Booleans also used, you know, in electrical engineering... Uh, when you're dealing with circuits and stuff. That's why I bring up the uh, light bulb example because it's a good it's a good indicator of on, off, true, false, one, zero, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so with that being said, how do we create a Boolean? Well, we first use the Boolean keyword. So 
Boolean, and then we give it a name. Uh, typically, Boolean names will start with has or is. Usually, Booleans are in the form of a question. So, example, we'll, for, for an example, we'll say, is kitchen light on? Sometimes you'll find, sometimes uh, you'll see some uh, booleans have a, have has as well, or was, or something of that nature. Basically, they're for they're formed in a yes or no question. Um, so equals, and we'll give it a value. Uh, my kitchen light currently is on, so we'll say it's true. You can also assign false. By saying, by assigning it a false value, but because because it's on for this example, I'm going to say true. Right. So with that, we can print this one out. So system out print ln, and we'll say is kitchen light on. And it looks like I typed it in wrong. Is kitchen light on? Oh, I forgot the en in the variable name. All right. So with that, we can save it. And we will run the code, and you can see we have true in our console. But if we change it to a false value, so false, and we run this, you can see we have false printed in the, in the console as well. Now, like I said, Booleans are are used to are, are basically used to initiate some kind of logic um booleans can also be like say you want to test if a, it you know if your age is uh greater than or equal to 18 uh you can that that's a boolean technically um but we'll cover more complex boolean statements in the coming tutorials um, but that's basically how you do a boolean and to end off this tutorial I almost forgot one other numeric uh, variable type that we have and that's uh, well two actually a short and a long now short and long are different types of they're different types of integers we have integer short and long those are the three types of uh, integers um, an integer is kind of in the middle, whereas a short is the shortest type of integer, and the long is the longest type. Um, so how do we create a long and a short? Well, to create a long, we type the long keyword, we'll, and we will call this sum long, and we'll set it equal Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. And we can repeat that. So this is our value. You can see we, we have a red line. If we hover over it, it says the literal, and then our value, of type int is out of range. So this is too big. We'll just give it this value here. So one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. And then short, uh, we, we give it a short keyword and we name it sum short. We'll set that 
equal to one, two, three, four, five, six. And even this is too big for a short. So we'll give it one, two, three, four, five, right? So we have that and we can print these out. So system out print ln right so we can then give this some long some short now as you can see when we define our long and our short other than the keywords they are defined exactly the same as an integer. Just know that longs take in a bigger value than, than a normal int does, and a short takes a significantly shorter value than a, than a normal int would. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see our values printed to the console. Now, what about their sizes? How, what, are, what are the maximum values that these can take? Well, so let's go ahead and print out the max of uh, the maximum values for these uh, for these uh, integer types. So first of all, we need to print out integer dot max value like we did before and the, it's the same process for a long so long with a capital L dot max value and then the same process for the short so short with an uppercase s and max value so if we go ahead then and we save this We can run it, and you can see we get our values here. So the uh, the maximum value uh, for the uh, for an integer is two billion one hundred forty seven million four hundred eighty three thousand six hundred and seventy six hundred forty seven. Uh, and then we've got a significantly longer value for a long as the second one. It's about uh, nine more digits, I think, ish. Um, and then the maximum value for a short is a mere 32,767. So, you know, these different value, these different variable types can be used in different circumstances. It really depends on what you're doing. Uh, you won't see a short very often. Um, but you'll also, uh, you'll also see, uh, you won't, you also won't see, you, you also see bytes. It, that's another integer type, uh, even, le even less so. Um, but we can cover it just in case. Um, uh, you'll sometimes see long, but not quite as much. Um, you might see it every now and again in Android development, but even then, that's kind of rare. M mostly, you'll just use an int. So, on that note, let's go ahead and cover. Uh, let's go ahead and cover bytes for a second. Uh, bytes are an even smaller form of integer uh, than uh, than an int. And how do we declare a byte? Well, we we do byte. That's the keyword. We give it a name. So sum byte, and we'll give it an an initial value of eight. So that's our value. We will then uh, system out print ln sum byte. And then I will also uh, do a blank print ln statement here to, just to give it a new line. So 
So we do that, we save it. And we run it. You can see we get eight and then our maximum values for uh, integer, long, and short. But we can also uh, get the ma what the maximum value for a byte is. So system dot out dot print ln and we go byte with an uppercase b dot max value and so when we save that and we run it you can see the maximum value for a byte is 127 it's significantly smaller like I said you won't see byte very much but it is there. Uh, I want I want you guys to be as I want you guys to ha to be knowledgeable on all of the different types, all the different tools in your Java arsenal. So we had to cover it uh, as well as everything else. So that that basically does it for vi what, for variables. I know this is a lot of information to di to digest. Uh, you can you can go back. And rewatch the tutorial, luckily, um, and and stuff to kind of get your, to get an idea. Um, make some make some of these t variables yourself. Get used to creating them because we're going to be creating a lot of variables in in future tutorials and in our example projects as we move forward. So that basically does it for this tutorial, guys. Thank you all so very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. See ya.